once more into the fray, my friends. Once more into the fray. This time, I want to talk about The Descendants, directed by Alexander Payne. Uh, he also wrote the script with a few other people, based on a book, starring George Clooney and a bevy of other talented actors who really shine in it. Uh, a few that stuck out to me were Bo Bridges, channeling his brother, I think it's his brother, Jeff Bridges, Matthew Lillard, who it was so great to see Matthew Lillard again. He's an underrated actor. Uh, anyone who's seen SLC Punk uh, can attest that he, he could really bring it when he has to. And it sucks that pretty much since Scream, he's done nothing. Uh, Robert Forster, he's small role in this, but great in it. Uh, I don't know a lot of the other actors' names, but the, everyone was really good in this. Uh, so, what is The Descendants? It's an Oscar-nominated drama uh, directed by Alexander Payne, which I've said before. Who Alexander Payne, he made one of my favorite movies ever, Election, and not a lot of other movies that I like. Like, I don't like About Schmidt. There's another one he did, uh, Sideways. I felt like it was an overrated but I love Election, and I really appreciated The Descendants. Uh, George Clooney is kind of a rich real estate guy who lives in Hawaii, which already makes him very hard to relate to. But immediately, you're going to relate to him. Well, I don't know if you're going to relate to him, but he, he becomes very sympathetic early on. He's this rich real estate guy who, at the beginning of the film, his wife got in a motor boat accident and she's in a coma and she's gonna die basically and you get to follow him on his journey from when she's in the coma to when she dies so if you don't want to know any more than that you know just turn it off right here and uh i'll let you know it was pretty damn good but uh and then along the way you know he has to learn to Raise his daughters on his own, connect with them again, and he has to decide what to do with his wife. He has to, he finds out that she was cheating on him at the time of her accident, like leading up to the accident, she was cheating on him and she was badly in love with somebody else and she was thinking about a divorce. And a lot of the movie is, you know, spent watching George Clooney react to this and, uh, learn how to raise his daughters, and looking for the guy that she was cheating with, who is a real estate agent uh, played by Matthew Willard. He has a small role, but like I said, he's awesome. Um, <clears throat> it's a very depressing subject matter. It's one I can relate to. I'm not a husband, never have been. Who knows if I ever will be, but, you know, I've been through, uh, you know, I've been through people dying on you, and... You know, it's just not it's not pleasant material, but not all movies have to be pleasant. And this movie addresses the subject matter in an honest matter, but it's also and you know, so it, and it is I would say pretty thoroughly depressing through a lot of it, but it also has a light touch. It's not heavy handed with the subject matter. It's not afraid it doesn't shy away from anything, but it just it has a positive outlook on life. And on top of that, it is the, you know, the drama and the depressing stuff in it. It's broken up by very smart humor. For a lot of people, it won't be laugh out loud humor. But for me, like, there were parts where I was just like, this is great. This is so funny. Um, for instance, he takes his daughter and they're going around telling people that, you know, the mom's going to die. Like him and his daughter. And his daughter is like college age. She wants to bring her boyfriend, and the boyfriend's a total goofball, like, idiot. And he starts laughing at the father-in-law's wife. He starts laughing at the mother-in-law, because she's, uh, what is she? She's, like, Alzheimer's. I, I almost have Alzheimer's myself. And Robert Forster, the father-in-law, walks over to him and he goes, 
what the hell is wrong with you? And he's like, I don't know, is she, ser is she serious? And Robert Forster goes, I'm going to punch you now. And he just punches the kid in the face. Uh, there's, there's another conversation that George Clooney has with the kid. Like, George Clooney can't sleep, and he goes and talks with his daughter's boyfriend. And, you know, the boyfriend makes the assertion that he's smart. He's like, I'm smart. I'm, I'm really smart. And this kid's just a total dumbbell. And, and George Clooney goes, you're about 100 miles away from Smartville. No offense. And the kid is like, what does he say? He's like, no, I am smart. He's like, you know, I, uh, I, uh, I play chess. You know, I do this, I do that, and I always have weed. <laughs> You're just like, I don't know. It's hard to ex explain what's funny about it, but the movie, it definitely has, it has a sense of humor about it throughout. And I, I feel like a very smart, you know. You know, very smart, not laugh out loud necessarily, but it's very highbrow. It's funny. It's it's funny for smart people. Not that I'm calling myself one of those, but... And it's... You know, it's everything I said. It's honest. It's depressing. It's, you know, subject matter that won't be for everybody. Like, some people won't be able to deal with it. Um... But it's good all around. Great performances from everybody in this. George Clooney gives one of his best performances. His daughters are great in it. His one younger daughter is like a total spaz, and she does a lot of weird stuff. But she's acting out, and she's young, and she's going through a hard time. So you're sympathetic to her. The college-age daughter is great. I wish I knew their names. I don't know them. Uh, you know, the the... Father-in-law, Robert Forster, I thought he was really good in it. He was only in it for a scene or two. Matthew Lillard is only in it for, like, one scene, but he... I, I don't know. I think the guy is just underrated, overlooked, uh, deserves more roles. Because, you know, he just he has a small role here. There's no humor to what he's doing. He's playing, like, a, a totally straight role, and he's just basically, like... Well, I don't want to give away the interaction and what happens with him. But, yeah, a big part of the movie is just George Clooney connecting with his daughters again, trying to raise them without his, his wife, making the decision to pull a plug on his wife, and letting his family know um, that she's going to die, and, you know, looking for this guy who you know, was banging his wife. And who his wife, from what he knows, probably loved and wanted to leave him for. Which is, you know, imagine having to go through that. Like, your wife's about to die, you have to pull a plug on her, and you find out she was banging some guy and she wanted to leave you. That's a tough thing to go through. It's the type of stuff that most movies would shy away from. And most movies, if they did do them, it would be very heavy-handed and just not well done. This movie does it well. There's a whole other aspect of it where it's, uh, you know, he's like this rich guy who at first, like, through, throughout it, I was like, this secondary plot about how he's rich and he owns land in Hawaii and, like, within six days of when the movie starts, he has to meet with all his cousins and decide who they're going to sell the land to because there's all these, you know, they want to develop the land like, he basically owns this really beautiful beachfront, undeveloped property in Hawaii. And I was just kind of like, one, why does George Clooney have to be rich? It makes him, like, he's sympathetic from the beginning, but he's less relatable because you, most people aren't rich. They don't own land. They aren't going to be millionaires if they sell this property and this and that. And I thought that was, like, a sticking point. And it's, it stuck out for, like, a lot of it. Because that was a secondary plot, is who they're going to sell the land to, and, you know, they're going to split up the money, or... I was just like, who cares? But they made it work where that the, the, the sale of the land fit into the main plot in a very, in a very good way by the end. I'm not going to spoil it, but this secondary plot about this land that he owns and he has to sell... They fit it in there in a in a, in a very 
Like, it just fits. It fits with the rest of the story. It, do I totally buy, like, what happens with that? I don't know. If it was me, I would say I would probably take a different route than George Clooney. But then again, I'm not a rich person in the first place who has to worry about this shit. But yeah, there's this whole thing going on where they they want it, they have to sell this land within seven years, and you know his family has inherited it. And it's this undeveloped land in in Hawaii, like this beachfront property, and there's all these different bidders who want to. They all basically want to do the same thing. They want to build a resort slash golf club on it, and they have to like. Him and his cousins all have to decide, you know, all the people who inherit it have to decide who they're going to sell it to and, you know, they're going to divvy up the money. But George Clooney's character is the sole trustee of it, whatever. He's like in charge of this trust. And so the ultimate decision is up to him. Uh, so it weighs heavy on him. And it's like this secondary plot that's going on where, like I said, throughout most of it, you're like, one, why does he have to be a rich guy? Two, what do I care about this plot? It has nothing to do with the main plot. But they fit it in nicely near the end, and with some humor too. Like Bo Bridges has like this great scene where he like he like is talking nice to George Clooney and then in the same breath like threatening him. And, and they do it in a way where it's not like it's the complete opposite of laugh track comedy where it's like if you're not paying attention or you're not in tune with like smart humor, you might not even think it's funny, but it, to me it's just so funny the way Bo Bridges is like, you gotta do the right thing, man. We're, we're behind you, buddy. And if you don't do it, we're gonna fuck you. We're gonna come at you, bro. Like, I don't know. I hope I'm not giving away too much, but they, they fit in this secondary plot nicely. Was it my favorite movie of, of 2011? No. Uh, you know, is, is it like, I wasn't head over heels with it, like some movies I've seen lately, but I've liked it a lot. Um, and the other thing is, and here's the reason I'm not going to give it a five star rating, is because it reminded me a lot of Hesher, which is a little different, but I mean, Hesher is about a family coping with the death of a loved one. Uh... The Descendants is about a family coping with the fact that they're going to lose their their mom and and wife. Uh, it's so it, it's a fine distinction there. Um, the Descendants has a lighter touch. It's more sophisticated. Uh, the humor is very smart and very dry. Hesher is. It's very brash and just bold humor, and it has, like, this really memorable, very, like, laugh-out-loud funny title character, who isn't the main character, but he just dominates the film, and that's Hesher, played by Joseph Gordon-Levitt. So it's, it's just kind of two different flavors of the same thing, and I'll be honest, I kind of prefer Hesher. I think it has more staying power. I think it's more memorable down the line. And just, I think, Hesher himself, the title character, is one of the best characters of 2011. If not, fuck it, he was my favorite. I, I just, I really related to Hesher. I really did. I related to that movie on a very personal level a lot. And I thought it was funny as hell, as well as depressing. And The Descendants is just like a different flavor of the same thing. It's more sophisticated, it's smarter. But it just, and it had good humor in it, but... It's just going for something different, and it's not bad. I'm not knocking it at all. I just didn't love the, the Descendants as much as Hesher. I don't know how many people would make the comparison between the two, but I felt they had a lot in common. Uh, it's just one is one is about dealing with death like that is expected, and you're planning for it, and that whole movie takes place before the person dies. And Hesher is about the chaos that happens in the wake of someone dying. Um, and maybe it's because like I've experienced people dying suddenly more, but I don't know. I just I thought Hesher I liked more, so I'm gonna give the Descendants four out of five. But I totally get why it was nominated for so many awards, and I thought it was pretty great myself. Um, 
it'll grow on you as it goes along. So four out of five. Thanks for watching, guys.